In today's show, we're going to be doing a lamb rib with a difference. How many times you've been out there in the desert and the wind is howling or on the beach for that matter and you've got this lovely lamb rack in your in your fridge and well doing it on an open fire just not gonna work all the sand's gonna blow onto it so I'm gonna show you guys today how to do a beautiful lamb rack in the Dutch oven and some roast potatoes using your bread oven what are the ingredients that you need simple you need obviously your lamb rack um, some coarse salt, this is a lemon pepper, braai salt, um, some barbecue salts, some soya sauce, olive oil, rosemary. Don't forget the rosemary. Rosemary goes so well with lamb. You need a can of tomatoes. I've chopped up some onions and about four or five cloves of garlic. Um, I'm going to be adding some beautiful red chili. Look at these peppers, man. They're awesome. And some green chilies into this. You need a little bit of sugar. And, uh, and I've chopped up some potatoes. So the potatoes are already done. We're gonna do some roast potatoes at the same time. This will take you probably around about two hours to do perfectly. So we've got some coals going already and we're gonna jump straight into it right now. Okay, good, I've chopped them up into two nice spots. Hopefully that fits into the pot now. Just take a, a sprinkle of olive oil and just rub it over the outside so that when you salt it now, some nice coarse salt, that it sticks to the meat while we're trying to flame grill them. Well, we're not going to be flame grilling it on this because I've only got a charcoal fire going, but if you have a nice wood fire, flame grill it, be fantastic. So you can be quite liberal with the salt because once again, when it goes in the pot, you know, it's all going to mix together anyway. So um, salt it up nicely. And uh, at this point in time, I'm not putting any rosemary on it because I'm just going to brown it and then I'll put the rosemary, it goes in the pot and then all that rosemary flavor will go straight into there. So straight onto the fire, here we go. There we go, 10 to 15 minutes, nice hot fire, brown it up nicely. Those of you with a, a keen eye probably realize that this is not a full rack of ribs. This is actually a shoulder with a rib piece on the side. So I've got the shoulder piece and the rib, riblet section over here. Doesn't really make a difference. This has just got chunks of big, thick meat. So it's gonna be lovely in the pot. Uh, let's cover this up for all the flies. And it can rest there for a while while you're busy with the last bit of your prep. Now, I've got a bit of lovely red peppers over here, some nice chilies. I'm just going to chop these up. And it doesn't need to be too fine because everything's pretty much going to melt in this pot, right? So you don't have to be too fine. You want all the juices to come out in this. Oh, there's the pips. There's the hot stuff now. Ha, 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 ha. Right, I'm going to chop up some green chilies as well. We like our food nice and hot. You don't need to add this to the recipe. Another thing to remember, because this pot's going to be on for about one and a half to two hours, depending on, obviously, the amount of meat that you've got in there and the heat that you're going to be putting on it. So in time, the chili also cooks away. So yeah, if you think two, go three. If you think one, go two. Um, we'll put in four for today. All right, the next step, a little bit of oil in your Dutch oven, not too much. And uh, I've, like I said, I've freshly chopped up an onion. 
and a whole bunch of garlic. So I think I've got four or five cloves of garlic in there. I'm going to stick that in there. The onions and the garlic in there right now. Uh, we can get the chili in there. And normally when you're doing a stew pot or a poiki, you would brown the onions first. But uh, because this is all going to be cooking in those juices and actually helping and steaming around the lamb and cooking the lamb and making it nice and tender, we don't need to brown this right now. So I'm going to stick that in. A uh, can of tomatoes. Tomatoes help to tenderize the meat nicely. So tomatoes, just chopped tomatoes. Just standard chopped tomatoes, a whole can can go in there. I mean, look at that, that's just looking awesome. The colors are coming through. Right, mix that in. Now what we want to do is just take some normal barbecue, just some good spices and you can be quite liberal once again with this. Get the spices in there. Good rosemary. Now remember your lamb loves rosemary so you can put in a bunch of rosemary in over here. Okay, we're adding a bit of soy sauce. Soy sauce is going to make the saltiness come through and I'm going to contradict myself with that. Yeah, that should be good. Mustard, just any plonk mustard. You can go with Dijon mustard as well if you want, but just a bit of mustard. Obviously, we're not putting tomato sauce in because we've got the tomatoes, right? Again, just some lemon pepper. Jam that in there. That looks really good. Now, haha. <laughs> funny ingredients. Just a bit of sugar. Now, normally brown sugar is what you would want over here, but when you're out camping, how many of you really have brown sugar with you? So I would say probably about three, four tablespoons. Uh, this is just going to make the sauce nice and sticky. So when, when the lamb is done, when the ribs are done, you're going to be using this sauce and pouring it over that and sticky sauce. I think that's enough. Um, if we need more, we can always put it in a bit later. Right, so now time for the meat to go in. This pot is a little bit small for the amount of meat that I'm putting in here. But hey, if it doesn't turn out right, we'll just do another show for you. But I'm sure it'll be fine. So what you want to do is just put some water in here. And you want to basically get half of the meat covered. Um, in this case, I'm probably going to have to use quite a bit of water. So, let's have a look at that. Yeah, that's, that's looking good. What's that? It was about 500 mils. Done. Lid can go on. Hopefully it closes. Uh -huh. Okay. You don't have to worry about that too much right now because we're only going to be cooking from the bottom. We're not going to be putting any, any heat on the top right now. So, as, as it starts cooking, whether you're using beef or lamb, it normally starts shrinking and there'll be enough space. Later on, we'll put the heat on the top. So right now, we're going to stick it straight onto the coals, heat from the bottom only, so it can start creating that boiling uh, convection effect. Let's give it a bash. What I've done is I've taken half the coals that I used to cook to brown it, and I'm going to stick it straight onto that. That should be enough heat for now. And I've left the other half of the coals to the side. Reason, reason being, is I'm going to create some extra charcoal. So as this goes, I can just keep on feeding it. And I also need additional charcoal for the roast potatoes. So let's jump into that right now. So for this pot, you can either take your potatoes, do jacket potatoes straight onto the fire, put a tin foil, some garlic, some butter, wrap it up over there. And they typically take about a half hour to 45 minutes on the fire on the direct coals in tin foil. But what we've done here is I've chopped up my potatoes. I want them to be nice roast potatoes. So rather, yeah, quarter chunks. And I'm going to use my bread oven for this. Um, if you've got two Dutch ovens, hey, or by, by all means, use the second Dutch oven. But how many people really do cover, carry two Dutch ovens? Normally carry your Dutch oven and your bread oven. So what we want to do is, again, a little bit of olive oil on the bottom. And hopefully these potatoes all fit in here. First time I'm actually doing it into in the bread pot. So we'll see how it works out. <laughs> Normally just do it straight in the Dutch oven. But this is obviously now a lot more stacked. 
So I might have to just make sure they get crispy and then give them a stir every now and then. Um, put a little bit more olive oil on the top and just mix that through nicely. And once again, just salt it. This is this lovely lemon pepper and it's gorgeous. Just mix it all up. Make sure that the oil gets around everything over there because that'll give you a nice crispy effect. Now this, you're going to be cooking probably about 60% on the heat from the top and the rest from the bottom. But because we've got an hour and a half to go or two hours to go with the meat, I'm just going to stick this on the side and make sure that the ambient heat from the fire, just put it on the side and that's cooking it. And what I'll do is just keep on turning it. Oh, you've got an escapee. Um, and just keep on turning it every now and then so it starts slowly cooking it and I'll start gauging it as that meat starts getting to the right consistency and then start jacking this up and putting more coals on the top. So basically prepare everything at once, stick it on the fire at once and you don't have to worry for the next hour and a half and you can have a couple of cold ones with your mates and then you can surprise them with a fantastic meal. All right, there you have it as you see. Move some of the coal aside. I'm starting some new coals over here. I'm going to stick this guy right next to that. The breeze is blowing this way. So as this warms up, it's going to start cooking on the side over here. And I'll just keep on turning it until this guy looks ready. I can't wait. My mouth's watering. I can already smell the aroma coming through from here. Fantastic. All right, we've been going for about hour 45 minutes, almost two hours now and uh, it's starting to pull off the bone and that's where you know we're there, we're there. This is looking absolutely awesome. What I've done in the meantime is I heated up the, the, uh, the roast potatoes and just got the heat going straight from the top so we could brown them nicely and they're looking absolutely fantastic. So I reckon what we're going to do so we're going to take this guy off so it rests and it can actually start you know, thickening up the sauce. Take it off the heat for a while. Maybe about 15 minutes or so it'll stay nice and warm in this pot and thicken up that sauce. And that's what we're going to use to pour over our roast potatoes and the lamb. And the chicken is going off. I don't know if, don't know if you can hear it, but the guy wants to be part of the show. Right, time. It's rested now for a little while. Let's take this off and just stick it over there. Uh, let's have a look what this looks like. Oh man, look at that. Oh, it's just falling off the bone. Oh, look, look at that. Just chunks of meat coming straight off. Ah, right. Well, I'll leave the bony section over there. Let's cut this up. Some chilies. All right, have a look with the roast potatoes. Oh, 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 that's gotta be quick. That's gotta be quick. Some roast potatoes. Look at those guys. Now, I suppose you can add salads and all kinds of things like that, but quite frankly, not for me. Some potatoes in there, and then this is where the nice part comes in. Remember that sauce that we made in the beginning? Now that's thickened up beautifully, and all that is lying down right here at the bottom. And then you can use this to marinate right over there. And why not? It's a good sauce. Let's put some on the potatoes as well. Oh, look how nice and thick that has come out. There you can see the shoulder in this one here and that's why the ribs, I thought it was a riblet, but it's a nice shoulder. Give the shoulder, that's lovely meat over there. Give some to the missus. I'm sure she's gonna wanna eat some right now as well. And that's it. Now, call the troops. And knives and forks. Yalla. It's nice and warm. Oh, here you are. Come, take a seat. 
Try this out. Wow, it okay. looks delicious. Lamb, well, it's a riblet shoulder kind of a effect. So I've given you some of the shoulders, some of the nice fatty meat That's over perfect. there. Here's the ribs over here. We can try the ribs when we're done with this. Some roast Keep potatoes. Some roast potatoes with Smells a delicious. special sauce. I'm going to try the potato first. I also want to try the potatoes. They look oh, so they're good. nice and fluffy inside. So. Oh, I've got a crunchy bit there. Crispy on the outside. Fluffy. Ooh. Fluffy. Mm. And let's try this out. Well done, oh. Chef. I'll give him credit. I'll give him credit. <laughs> You haven't even tried the meat yet. I'm going to now. It just absolutely melts in your mouth. No, look, it's falling off the bone. Wow. Should have added more chili. As I said in the beginning, chili cooks away. Can hardly taste it. Well mm. done, darling. Well done. Oh. I'm proud. <laughs> I've taught him well. <laughs> Here we go. See you later. Send some pics of the ones that you do. Hashtag if it's dusty, drive it. And I'm going to scoff this down in <laughs> seconds now. And I'm damn hungry. Haven't eaten all day. So I'm going to enjoy this. Thanks, love. Later.